We are living through what Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan called last week a credit tsunami. Paul Volcker, who preceded Greenspan at the Federal Reserve, also said last week that we're dealing with events without precedent. It has been a sea change on Wall Street, and that's the world that I still am very much in the middle of. In a matter of weeks, we have seen the end of investment banking and the partial nationalization of this country's largest banks. The government has come to the rescue of our biggest insurer, AIG, and the biggest companies that back our mortgages, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. And now the government is talking about rescuing GM and Chrysler. It is unbelievable what has happened in the last few weeks. The economists are debating how long the recession will last and how deep it will become. Most agree that we're not headed for a Great Depression. Ben Bernanke, who is head of the Federal Reserve, um, spoke at the Economic Club of New York just two weeks ago. And one of the questions was, how is this different from the Great Depression? And one thing that everybody needs to know, actually, which is a calming thing, is that Ben Bernanke is a student of the Great Depression. And so he really wanted to make sure that we were not repeating history. So some of the things that the Fed has done, being much more proactive, is very different from the Federal Reserve um, during the Depression. Before the Depression, the Federal Reserve basically raised rates rather than lowering them, uh, didn't do anything for a very long time. So the Fed now is lowering rates often and early, early and often, um, and also being very proactive in terms of other things that they're seeing um, happening in the economy. And, you know, and Hank Paulson and the Treasury are getting involved as well. The other thing, of course, that the, the Fed is trying to do is to make sure that the banks have money to lend and that, in fact, they are lending. And the other big difference between now and the Depression is that there is insurance on bank deposits, and now even money market funds are insured by the government. The problem now is one of trust. People don't trust Wall Street, and they don't trust the government, for good reason. Banks don't even trust each other. But without trust, the financial system does not work. That is why all the world's central bankers are working together to restore trust. And I'm confident that they will because they know that they have to. We thought that we could continue living beyond our means forever, or at least for a while longer. Consumers made up the difference between what they spent and what they earned by using their houses as ATM machines. As a country, we borrowed from China to keep up a lifestyle that we really couldn't afford. Now families are beginning to cut back. And as a country, we'll eventually have to pay attention to balancing the budget, but not for a while, because uh, the policymakers are putting together bailouts and stimulus packages in order to get the economy moving again. And in fact, that is what they should be doing now. President Bush is calling world leaders to come to the US after the election to start talking about rebuilding the financial structure of the world. Imagine that we've come to the point that we're talking about rebuilding the financial structure of the world. OK, so what's it all mean to you? Human resources, recruiters. For one thing, you're on the front line with employees who are seeing layoffs and cutbacks in benefits, and as we were talking to Jason, huge reductions in their 401ks. You will need to figure out ways to boost their morale. Some employees will decide that they need to work longer and postpone retirement. You may be deciding that. You should be focusing on how to keep your most valuable workers and figuring out which ones they are. Now's the time to figure out other ways to compensate employees when there's no money for bonuses and the stock options are underwater. This is the time to really be able to think about some creative solutions. You can help the managers and executives think through what they want for the company and its employees. You can take a seat at the table closer to the center of power. And you can prepare for the future rather than just react to it. Overall, I think we're in a time of less rather than more. And that isn't all bad. We will get through this. We are a strong nation and a strong economy. It is important not to panic. Take time, as you're doing today, to think, to network, to enjoy each other, and to enjoy this place.